Mr. Alquist, good afternoon and welcome. Uh, thank you, Senators. Um, as a reporter, I've been to two white supremacist rallies here at the State House that were held in the South Lawn in April and June of last year. Um, at both rallies, violence broke out. I photographed and I recorded it when it happened. These were groups that were brought in from Boston through a group called Resist Marxism. The second time, they flew people in from Portland who were here just to commit violent acts here in Rhode Island against anti-fascist protesters, anti-white supremacist protesters, mostly young teenagers, young 20-year-olds um, from a variety of different faiths, Jewish, Christian, non-believers, black, white, Latino, um, Cambodian, the, um, trans, gay people, people who have a lot to lose in this society when people like that assert power. Um, I know a little bit about these white supremacist groups because I've also been to the rallies they had in Boston, including the one where tens of thousands of people went out to counter a similar rally in Boston. And there was no violence in there because they were so vastly outnumbered. Uh, recently, the Huffington Post ran a piece revealing a series of online conversations by white supremacists where they were actively planning violence in Rhode Island for a rally they were going to hold here last April. Um, that rally never happened, it never materialized, but they were also, soon after canceling that, they planned a similar rally for the day after tomorrow, June 1st, which also looks like it may not happen, but it's because of the people who go out and counter protest that these things don't happen, that we do not have rallies like this on a monthly basis, that they haven't really taken root here, groups like the Proud Boys and other white supremacist organizations. Um, I just want to be clear, that, um, I'm sorry. And when these <coughs> things have happened in Rhode Island, our police aren't really taking a strong stand. They see both sides as equal. There's an equivalence being brought as if there's white supremacists saying we want to wipe out certain people. We don't want certain people to live in this state. We want to you know, do things. And then on the other side, there are people who are saying, you know, we want um, to live in peace. We don't want people here who are threatening us, who are actively calling for our extermination. And this is what these rallies are like. They don't take off very well, but they're very dark, very hateful. Um, you know, there's a philosopher, his name is Karl Popper, and he was talking about something called the paradox of intolerance. And the paradox of intolerance is that in a open and free society, you can pretty much tolerate as wide of earth, a wide array of um, belief systems as possible, but you really can't tolerate intolerance because once you do that, you've, you're doing away with people's feel, um, freedoms. Um, and my last point is that in this time of rising right-wing intolerance that we're seeing in governments across the world, not, you know, you could say what you want about Trump, but in across the world we're seeing right-wing groups take place. The recent um, EU elections showed a very big um, right-wing sweep, right? And we always wonder, we always ask ourselves what we would have done if we lived in pre-Nazi Germany. And I think we all know now what we would have done in pre-Nazi Germany because we're doing it actively now. Whether or not we end up in a place where real fascist governments take root in a very strong way or not, these are the same signs we saw, we saw back in 1930, as you alluded to, are happening today. And whatever we're doing now is exactly what we'd have done previous to the Nazi takeover. And I think it's important that we stand against it. So it would be really great if, as a state, on some level, our state government made a resolution like this and said, we do not stand for the kinds of things they stand for. I'm not seeing it in our government that strongly. I'm not seeing it from the police. I'm not seeing it from our government. The Senate making a resolution like this, I think, could send a good sing signal, especially to disenfranchised youth who are out there on the front lines repelling these kinds of groups who don't really feel that the government or the police ever have their back. It would really be something if we could show that maybe sometimes the government does something positive for these kids. And I would like to say pass this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Mr. Alquist? Senator Lombardi. Thank you. And just a comment. I, you know, I want to echo what Senator Met says. I have the uh, good fortune of sitting next to Senator Nestle Bush. So we argue, we joke, we uh, debate, and uh, but at the end of the day, we're very good friends, and uh, I cherish her friendship very much. And it's troubling to me. It's troubling to me that um, that we've got to actually consider 
drafting a resolution like this in 2019. Uh, that there's, uh, and I think in many ways, although I don't necessarily agree with Steve Alquist on a lot of things, uh, I do agree that I think it's it's falling from on high in Washington. There's a lot of rhetoric coming down from 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 Washington. So uh, I support this wholeheartedly, uh, and I just hope, Mr. Weiss, that this is precisely the kind of stance that is the the brave stance, the strong stance, the message that's going to be sent, uh, or if we need, uh, or we need something more. Uh, I I think that it's particularly poignant that this comes at a time when uh, those young Jewish Orthodox students saved a man from from drowning, uh, and when they pulled the man out, he had a swastika oh. on a tattoo on his arm, and they asked uh, if they had uh, given the choice. They said they would not have changed their mind. They would have done what they did. And I think that that's a symbol of exactly the type of tolerance that we're supposed to have in this country. And uh, unfortunately, it's not there. Thank you. Uh, Senator Metz. Uh, thank you. Senator Metz moves uh, Senate Resolution 829, Substitute A, second by Senator Lombardi. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Resolution passes.